Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 23 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to make wood pellets and then use Hellmod to figure out how to make fertilizer. Enjoy. Although we can use it for just general manufacturing, uh, it would also be nice to add it to the fuel belt and lessen our reliance on coal, especially because, you know, the number keeps going down. And even though our factory may not be doing a lot of work, if we're not researching or anything like that, it's, uh, it still requires some amount of power. So let's do the pellets. Uh, let's assume the full 15 here. Uh, we're consuming, you know, a large percentage of our wood output for compost right now. So to figure out how much we would need for... Uh, wood pellets. Let's just start a new line and, and type the number in manually. But we need wood pellets. Which comes from cellulose fiber, which we can make from wood. And we can save 15 wood. And there it is. And it's Red nice ratio there. 30 assemblers crunching it into fibers and then 20 turning it into wood pellets. So what does that do for the fuel? Well, you see how we're putting 15 wood in and getting five pellets out. Well, a wood has two megajoules. So if we're putting three of those in there, it should be six but the wood pellets actually have eight megajoules, so we get a little more energy out of it this way. So now we need 50 assemblers, and then we need to figure out where this wood processing will happen. I kind of don't want to pull it off of uh, the belt here because it might starve the rest of the system, and we want it to be only using excess wood for making pellets not part of the be the bus, so we probably want to do it, like, uh, down here, but fuel burning is happening up top, so actually we might want to take a separate bypass wood belt and send it all the way up here. So we'll worry about belting it later. For now, let's, uh, get this pellet processing figured out. Okay, something like this looks good, where we have one belt going in of the wood and then two belts going out because it becomes uh, twice as big when it goes out like that. Okay, something like this. Seems fairly balanced to me, but we won't know until we fire it up. So let's pick it up and put it in its final location. The fuel processing should probably happen somewhere around here, since this is kind of where we're already doing it. So it's kind of hard to tell. But this is the carbon belt. And this is the fuel belt right here. So we're putting a priority of carbon over coal here. So you probably want to do something similar and have another splitter here for the priority for the wood. I kind of need a better system for this because it's looking rather messy. But it'll, it'll work. So we need to do the processing somewhere around here. It would be better if we had a circuit network to make this a little cleaner, but since we don't... We'll just have to do it with splitters. Okay, it's hooked up. Let's see how it works. The reason why we're doing all this is because wood is basically free energy now that we can produce it essentially from nothing. The only thing it really requires is, uh, besides electricity, is a little bit of iron. It would be kind of a waste of all of those arboretums and whatnot to not have them producing stuff. For one, they reduce pollution, but they also produce energy, so we might as well use it 
if it's not being used for other more pressing needs in the factory. So that's kind of why I'm doing this, just to make use of all available resources and equipment. We need near inserters here. Okay, looks good. Next step. It's not picking anything up. Oh, it's because it's set to the wrong thing. Okay, seems like it's all mostly green. Wasn't really sure with all of these belts, but it seems to be good. And now all of these pellets need to send it towards the boilers. And this is where things get a little weird. So we also need to uh, pipe it in somewhere around here. Okay, let's see if this wood can be in integrated properly with the fuel belts. So what happens is it should take priority over from the carbon and then be sent down. Yep, that's what's happening. And meanwhile, the same should happen here. We are now burning wood products. Okay, next step, I think, is making desert gardens with fertilizer, saline water, and washed sand. Because we will later be able to break those down to get the alien plant life sample. We basically need the alien plant life samples in order to do the research packs necessary for farming. So there's a couple limiting factors that go into this. We can make the sand unlimited because that's just from washing. However, fertilizer essentially will start from sulfur, which is based on lead production. And the saline water, uh, although we're technically producing it as a byproduct, uh, I think the lead byproduct is going to be the limiting factor here, not the saline water. But we can find out. Um, actually, I don't think we quite have everything necessary to make fertilizer. Because... So we go to fertilizer, it's phosphoric acid and ammonia gas. But we can't make ammonia gas yet. Although it's right here at nitrogen processing. Where we will synthesize ammonia with hydrogen and nitrogen. And nitrogen we will get from air separation, which we can just get from the air. And it will produce oxygen, so this is gonna start getting a little complicated. We also might be limited on hydrogen too. Well, we'll see what Helmod says. Okay, let's see. I don't wanna populate this side too much, but they all are all kind of related to the same byproducts. So let's see how that works. So we're going to do sulfur dioxide gas into sulfuric acid. We're going to link. Well, that's weird. C4 pump. We know we want that to be the chemical plant. There we go link by input and the product is sulf sulfuric acid which we then want to turn into phosphoric acid right there and the phosphoric acid gets turned into fertilizer we have an input requirement of ammonia gas so let's make that comes from ammonia synthesis. We get nitrogen from the air. So 
So what kind of numbers are we dealing with here? Well, we need to kind of move everything down a bit. It looks like we're producing a surplus of oxygen, which makes sense. So we want to move this. The oxygen through dirty water. Move it down. Okay, I think I've got the order correct. Where it's ammonia, sulfuric acid, and then purified water electrolysis, and then the regular water electrolysis. So you look at the outputs, you can kind of figure out what's going on here. But we have a surplus of both oxygen and hydrogen while requiring an input of purified water. So if you see here, we're producing hydrogen and oxygen by electrolyzing purified water and requiring an input, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh, to do that. So if we get rid of it... Yeah, this is getting a little too complicated, so let's put it all on its own page. Okay, I think I got this cleaned up and legible. So it was getting a little complicated having all of the chemicals mixed in with the ore sorting, so I removed that. But it's important to look at what resources we're dealing with. So when it comes to the ore sorting, we have to look at what kind of inputs and outputs do we need and then type those numbers in manually for the different production lines. So we know we're gonna have an output of 7.5 sulfur dioxide gas on average, and we'll require 7.5 oxygen gas and 3.8 carbon monoxide. So then we go into this side, and to, to double check the work, we gotta look at what are the requirements. Well, the input for this is 7.5 uh, sulfur dioxide gas, which is that is the output here, and also we need to output 3.8 carbon monoxide, which we are. And our output is going to be a tiny bit of hydrogen and slag and whatnot. But otherwise you can see how the, the numbers line up and look pretty good. So what happens here? Well, it's going to be fairly similar to what it is now, really. It's just one electrolyzer with 30 water making oxygen. And then the clean water electrolyzer getting rid of the extra clean water. We have the reverse gas shift, which is creating the carbon monoxide and some of that clean water. However, to make the fertilizer we need phosphoric acid and ammonia, ammonia gas. So we're making phosphoric acid with sulfuric acid, which is being derived from that sulfur dioxide gas and some purified water. Now, luckily, the amount of purified water that we get from the reverse gas shift is just enough to power all of that and have a little bit left over. So there's a couple things here we need to do to clean this up. We need to get this phosphorus ore from somewhere, which is sorted through crushed stone and slag. As you can see, it actually requires way more than we could possibly have to feed it. That uh, this entire factory here, when it's going at full blast, is only going to be able to produce 24 stone in total if we're doing everything. So unfortunately, like this system won't be able to run at full power. But we need to switch this to ingredient list, or ingredient limitation. And set that to like 24. So about two ore sorters worth. However, it also produces slag, which we can get rid of to reduce the requirement of crushed stone. 
we have 24 crushed stone available from the rest of the factory. And that's assuming that basically everything that's available is getting crushed. And if instead of turning it into bricks, we would have that 24 stone, 24 crushed stone. Well, I have it set to where if we have an input of 24 crushed stone and basically I just typed in 80 here on this input, which actually put the ingredients to 80 here. We will produce four phosphorus ore and 28 slag. Four phosphorus ore is actually what we need for our recipe to work properly. Now this is going to produce 28 slag, but we can take that 28 slag and crush it into 56 crushed stone, which will reduce the requirement of 80 to 24 for what we have, and it all works perfectly. And that's not an accident. <laughs> that is how the system is designed. It, lots of clean ratios here. So the way it works is if our factory is running at full blast, we will just barely have enough stone to keep up with phosphorus ore. Otherwise, we will not. So it looks like a lot of the system can stay in place because it hasn't really changed much. Uh, we're still, again, this is output going to this other side here, so they're technically not there. Uh, we're still going to have a tiny output of hydrogen gas. It looks like it's probably going to be less than before but we'll have a tiny output of hydrogen gas. That's the end of this episode. In the next one, we are going to make phosphorus and fertilizer. See you later.